I'm from MIT, and I wonder how many of you have heard MIT. All of you? Yeah, good. And MIT is a place is only 10,000 students. And Steve Young, right here, was a student at MIT. So he spent quite a few years at MIT and doing research. I will show what he did and now become very important. When he did it at the time, nobody thought it was so important. Right? This is a appraisal given by US Congress. Okay? Your Senate in, uh, in uh, 2011, May 23rd, gave a appraisal to MIT, said, commemorate the 150th anniversary of the founding of the MIT, Massachusetts Institute of Technology. MIT found 66,900 companies are MIT alumni in the state of Massachusetts alone. 6,000, pretty good. All the, the companies are high-tech jobs. It's much better than flip hamburgers, or as, 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 uh, topos, and so on. These jobs are real jobs. So those companies have earned worldwide sales approximately $164 billion. So also, the distinguished living alumni, so people still have to live, living alumni. And uh, I found that approximately 25,800 25, companies as of 2011. I saw another figure, 2015. This become more than 32,000. And provide jobs for 3.3 million people around the world and earned annual income 2.2 trillion. Look how many zeros behind this. 12 zeros, 12 zeros, yeah? And the annual sales, it's, that means Every year, every year, the company earning this much money with 10,000 students and plus another thousand researchers and professors and supporting people, 20,000 people. So this number, revenue earned by MIT found the companies equals 11th economy of a nation, bigger than Indonesia. <laughs> 10,000 students. Steve was one of them there. Okay. So how do they do that? How do they do that? Through innovation, through imagination, and the creative uh, ideas. Here is Leonardo. He said, simplicity is the ultimate sophistication. <coughs> uh, Steve Jobs insisted. So each one has only one switch. It's a mouse, Apple mouse. Only one, one, not two clicks, right? One. And uh, he wants to be simple. So that's the key. Simple and easy to use. You don't have to read a menu. Because it's very difficult to do simple, it's much easier to do something more complicated. Here is my. My talk title, How to Innovate in Cutting Edge Research and Translate Research into New Economy. Here, I, I device the people taking notes. Yeah? The key ingredient for cutting edge research, free of all political in, in influences and interferences. That in Indonesia is almost impossible. <laughs> in Singapore, it's also impossible. Too much top down and then to, uh, to tell you to do this, to do that, and so on. I demonstrate there's 90%, perhaps even more, people have little science education. Little science education. However, they tell to do this and that. Totally nonsense. <coughs> so now we encourage original idea from the bottom up. <coughs> the students need to come up with good ideas. Not that all the professors have come good ideas. So encourage con continuous curiosity even as adult. Children, five years old, three years old, seven years old, 
then ask a lot of questions, right? You have experience, you have children, and most questions they ask you, some of them you can't even answer. You cannot answer. Not you cannot answer, I cannot even answer. Many Nobel Prize winners cannot answer either. But then when we get older, we lose this curiosity to ask questions. Ask questions is the key to do research. Now we also need to stimulate creativity at all environments. Okay. Not only just in school, in the classroom, but also at home, in shopping centers, yeah? in the vacation resort, in the restaurants, and so on. Okay? So also ensure honesty at all levels. In uh, advanced society, and when people do research, and uh, then take results, as then comes. In some other countries, and not well trained, so then try to manipulate the data. In the end, you deceive yourself. Yep. Look what's happened. Many high um, profile misconduct cases, then manipulate data and then uh, also then make up data. In the end, nothing comes out of that. Waste lots of money, lots of time, and so on. So honestly, it's very, very important in research. Yep. And uh, also, we don't inspire passion for learning and research. Learning passion is passion to do something you really want to do. Like today, you come here, nobody forced you to come on Saturday. You came here on your own. <coughs> That's a passion for learning. Very good. <laughs> But now you apply the passion to research as well. So only after you have those items, then you can generate the new scientific knowledge. Okay, without this part, you cannot generate scientific knowledge. So Einstein said imagination is more important than knowledge. It's absolutely true. Because knowledge is people before us generated. Hippocrates, we saw this, uh, and uh, some other pioneers of the in 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 the past. <coughs> imagination is yours; it's your own. You need to use imagination to generate new knowledge. Yeah. So 20 years from now, people will see in the textbooks your discoveries in the textbooks. Okay. So all the textbooks you are reading now. Knowledge generated by people before us. But now you are at the middle of this, you can generate new knowledge yourself. Okay? That's very important. So to do this, generate new knowledge, you need to ask big questions, got good questions, big and small. If you just ask questions, where to go have lunch, you just find the restaurants, right? You ask a question, how to cure cancer? That's a very big question. Then you have to go find the medicine to cure it. So go to, go to a restaurant for lunch, it's easy. You don't have to think a lot. But as a question how to cure cancer, it's a big question. You have to think a lot. You have to do a lot of things. Here is Francis Crick. He discovered DNA double helix. Yeah? He and Jim Watson discovered DNA double helix. 1953. He said you should always ask questions. The bigger, the better. He said if you ask big questions, you get big answers. This is obviously true. Yeah. He asked questions in the 1950s, and people have asked before, why the children look like parents? Why the vegetable sunflower produce sunflower, and the horse produce a horse? So that's a very simple question. So that must have some underlying principle. It's uh, universal to every living system. So that's why it eventually discovered the DNA double helix. Before discovering DNA double helix, the inheritance, the genetic inheritance, why parents so give their children the look like them, and so on, it was considered a mystery. It's creation of God, right? 
the creation in the Muslim is Allah created everything. It's not a, one, as soon as you have DNA double helix, you understood it's DNA replication. That's understood overnight like that. And also, why this, uh, the animal species, plant species, uh, change? You can select the rice to get a better yield is through breeding. Not breeding, it's also at the DNA level. <coughs> you get a better yield, you get better crops, and so on. So once you understand this, some single basic phenomena, the, the entire new industry spun called the biotechnology. Yeah, now biotechnology permeates uh, society, including, including the cosmetics, also going to biotechnology. Okay, so treatment disease, now vaccine production, also biotechnology. So it's a discovery in a double helix. Now we understand it was not God or Allah created out species, living species, is evolution, is genetics, is gradual, so gradual change the DNA, change that. Nanda Pauling said, if you want to have a good idea, you must have uh, lots of ideas and uh, throw most of them away. <coughs> Only keep a few of them. It's uh, very important to have that. Here are some examples of curiosity-driven research result in the vital economy. Okay. I ask a question, can you imagine today the word without them here. It's so lasers. Yeah? Imagine? Right the laser right here. The supermarket, the scanner, right? And uh, look measure the distance and the many other things are your lasers and medical surgery and so on. We go don't I'm going through this one through the pictures you can see. Yeah? So this was all the solicitor here has a tremendous impact for our society, for the advancement of uh, human uh, species. <coughs> so here is a uh, curiosity-driven blue sky research and uh, a threatened, threatened vital activity because more and more people now want to emphasize on translational or applied research. That's very short-sighted. Uh, Here is X-ray diffraction, 100 years X-ray crystallography. So this is uh, Willie Brock, this is Lawrence Brock, father and son. This is Van Nauer. Uh, so the father and son invented X-ray diffraction after Wen Han Renqing discovered X-ray. Uh, X-ray. He didn't know what to what that is really is, he called it X-ray, because he didn't understand what the ray really is. One thing I call X-ray. So X-ray diffraction has result understanding our molecules, structures, and so on, and uh, translate, transformed the medical science, translated drug discovery, transformed our knowledge at the molecular level. Vital science. The other is Fred Harper. He, Fred Harper discovered chemistry of nitrogen fixation and developed industrial fertilizer production. I don't in Indonesia, if you can fix the nitrogen from the, from the air. Nitrogen, a lot of nitrogen in the air. I think 8% the air is nitrogen. And uh, he was awarded 1980 Nobel Prize in chemistry with the synthesis and ammonia for its element, that's nitrogen. Imagine today without the nitrogen fixation, we don't have a fertilizer, fertilizer to, to, uh, to feeding the 7 billion population on the planet. So this nuclear fusion, nuclear fusion used for nuclear energy, also of course for the atomic bomb. 
So it's a dual-use technology. Otto Hahn was awarded 1944 Nobel Prize in Chemistry, but actually the real discovery made by her, Liz Mittler, was discovered in Hahn's lab. And uh, Liz Mittler was a, a Jewish. Jewish during the war, she has to escape to Sweden. So she was not awarded the Nobel Prize, but uh, his uh, mentor won the Nobel Prize. Here is uh, radio was invented by Jamilo Marconi and Carl Ferdinand Brown. And so once he invented the radio, first thing is telegraph. Telegraph, it can transmit information across the oceans from uh, Europe to US and so on. And now radio is again indispensable in our lives. This is not, this is the iPhone who comes to the radio. And then now, as you can see. But initially, they discovered this. Total by curiosity was not, uh, not uh, we want to make money out of this. Not at all. But we want to understand the phenomenon of radio waves. Penicillin. Yeah, Alexander Fleming and uh, Ernst Boris Chain and uh, Howard Flurry and discovered his famous story discovered penicillin but those two did a considerable amount of work so they were jointly won the Nobel Prize in medicine. During the World War I, World War I, not the war, people killing each other in Europe, most soldier, wounded soldiers died, most people died, soldiers died not from the gun wound, gunshot, but from infection after gunshot. So probably 70% of soldiers died because uh, lack of care and infected by from the wound. So after penicillin discovery and uh, the wound care and infection was significantly reduced. So then went on over price. However, today the lot of uh, bacteria, the antib antibiotic resistant bacteria has, has uh, evolved. So now we need a new system to discover new antibiotics. Here is transistor inventor, Nobel Prize in Physics, 1956, was awarded jointly to William Shockley, John Barton, and Walter House Branton. It was actually those two made the invention. He made a theory, he made the gadgets, but he insisted to have, have a have his name on the patent and so on, because he was a boss. Uh, he was a very difficult personality, but uh, anyway, he also contributed to, to uh, a transistor. But this trans transistor invention changed the history. From vacuum tubes in transistor, you shrink the computer down to very small. Now it's even smaller, and uh, because of uh, microprocessors, you mentioned in 1960s. Here is the founders of modern molecular biology and, and a few others. It's Max Delbruck, a physicist turned molecular biologist. There's Francis Crick, it's Leslie Ogo, it's Jim Watson, this is Steve and my mentor, MIT Professor Alexander Rich. And here is uh, Sidney Brenner. He lives in Singapore. He now has been in Singapore for about 20 years. This is Max Perut. He was uh, the first director of uh, MRC LMB. That's a laboratory, single laboratory in single building. One building produced 25 Nobel Prize. One building, yeah? So Singapore tried to copy that without any success. Maybe pretty try to copy that without any success because too much top down and then political interference. <coughs> Max, this person here, his way to do research to inspire other people is hire best people and unleash them, unleash them and let them do whatever they want. It's that kind of philosophy, and they made the LMB and the molecular biology 
when a so many Nobel Prize. Here, this is DNA, it's, it's Francis Crick, the Jim Watson, and discovered structure double helix. This is a double helix, a structure, as I told you earlier, once it's discovered, everything can be explained in terms of life. Okay, the single discovery will have a lasting impact for humanity and last impact for the biotechnology industry and the medicine. Here discovered a laser. He was in the Bell Labs and uh, later become provost at MIT. And then he moved to Berkeley and then died last year. Uh, he invented laser. Again, totally to play and have fun. Yeah? Not how to make a laser to make money. And in fact, laser for a long time did not make money. Yeah, until later on, people develop applications. Often, original discovery you do is satisfy your curiosity. Yeah, ask why nature has this kind of phenomena. Here is uh, Charles Cow. He made invented the optical optical fiber for communication was demonstrated by Charles Gao, UK, in 1990s, 1980s. So 19 to 2009, Nobel Prize in Physics was uh, awarded to him for groundbreaking achievement concerning the transmission of light in fiber for optical communications. The copper transmission for the data transmission is much slower than light. So the light transmission that you can download, stream the movies, stream movies on the internet because of light, the optical cable, no optical fiber. So data can be transmitted. And, uh, and so also you have telephone, mobile phone telephone calls. You make how many Indonesia is 240 million people making telephone calls. You have no problem because the last one goes through optical fiber cable. Here is uh, uh, liquid crystals, Nobel Prize in Physics, 1991, was awarded to Pierre Gass de Gain of France for the discovery that uh, method developed for studying order phenomena in simple system can be generalized to a more complex form of matter, in particular to liquid crystal and the polymers. So he told the play for fun, for fun, yeah, study liquid polymers. So you can line them or the wrong down them. And line them with, uh, with uh, some kind of um, stimulation and then can become disordered, eventually chaotic, uh, but has chirality, so it has different right-handed, left-handed twist. That produces this kind of image, and this kind of image eventually is that, okay, liquid crystal. Before the crystal, liquid crystal is a vacuum tubes, big television, Weigh on 40, 30 or 40 kilograms. Now the new one is weighs about 10 kilograms, a big telephone screen. But now the new technology now is replacing this once more. <laughs> so NMR is another one, and the development NMR theory and technology was at the Nobel, Nobel Prize 46, 52, 91, 20, 200, 200, 200, 2002. So the, this one is used to determine molecular structure of uh, uh, molecules. And this one is to MRI, yeah? MRI and the NMR is the exact same thing, but people were afraid, nuclear. So they changed the word, <laughs> so it the nuclear, yeah? So magnetic resonance imaging is uh, very important for scanning your tumors, and then scan your brain, and then monitor your health. Here, it's a very important discovery. Photo photography using various cameras in history. Those two discovered and invented called a charge coupled device. Invention was awarded the 2009 Nobel Prize in Physics for the invention of an imaging semiconductor circuit the CCD sensors. Now, all of you are soon type for your phone. 
most of your phone, smartphone, have a camera, right? Earlier camera was a big, camera had to be, you have a buy a camera. Now, most people don't buy a camera, right? You have your phone with a very good resolution taking pictures. What's the taking picture in it? Here, this chip, the 20 million pixel CCD. Earlier, so 1.2 million, now 20 million. So the image is tremendous. Initially, the image then make this not for your phone, made for telescopes. Yeah, try to discover the stars from distance. But in the end, consumer, I picked up and then use initial making cameras, but now when iPhone comes out, come with cameras, now most camera company died as a consequence of this. Here is uh, a group of scientists relevant for, for medicine, then you then discovered and invented monoclonal antibodies. The Nobel Prize in Physiology and Medicine in 1984 was awarded to Niles Jenner, George Kuhner, and the Cesar Melstein. <coughs> so those guys made the monoclonal antibodies by fusing mouse cells and tumor cells, eventually produce monoclonal antibodies. This can be amplified, can be selected. Recently, they can also humanize monoclonal antibody from the mouse antibodies to a camera, to so, so human antibodies that make a compromise that's uh, mix, mix, mix those two to make a humanized and a monoclonal antibody. So this is now used to treat, uh, to treat uh, various diseases in, uh, in, in, in the U.S. and elsewhere. Here is Einstein and it's Robert Millikan in 1920s, then there's the study to invent the photovoltaics. Okay, the photovoltaics now will be new solar energy. Indonesia has a lot of sun. It could also it's a developed photovoltaics and also a, a wind energy. So when then did the research in 1920s, then did not think at all they can make photovoltaics as an energy source. But now it's subsequent research to, to put the idea into practice use. <coughs> Here is development, a theory and discovery of superconductivity, one well, of the Nobel Prize in physics, 2013, 72, 73, 79, 2023. And soon, many other people will figure this out. So because this super, uh, superconductivity uh, here, can transmit electric electricity through the long distance from Jakarta here without to lose any electricity at all. So transmission, energy transmission will, will not lose, lose uh, electricity during transmission. Currently, you lose about 20%, 20% ele electricity during transmission. Here is Airbus. Airbus is a big airplane. The plane we flew in today. Look how many people have to participate to make this plane. A lot of people. Yeah? So lots of people needed to know the new economy key requirement is basic scientific and technological knowledge. Mathematics, physics, various engineering, mechanical engineering and, uh, and computer engineering, electrical engineering and so on, and computer science, robotics chemistry and quantitative biology, all involved in making the Airbus. By the way, CBA is directly involved in Airbus to make a next generation Airbus frame much lighter. Lighter and uh, fly faster. And uh, so far, from here, Jakarta, to, from, from Indonesia, Jakarta to New York, take about uh, 20 hours. Later, when they need a new plane, will only take uh, 10 hours. Still, turn are still very long, but it's better than 20 hours. Yeah. Here is the stem cells. I saw that a lot of people are very keen on stem cells. It's people want people to live longer, want to be younger, and want to have a nice face, uh, so on. Try stem cell injections, try to use stem cells to cure diseases. Discovered by those two. 
the Nobel Prize in Physical Medicine 2012 was awarded to, to Jiang B. Gordon and Shinya Yamanaka. This man studied frog, frog in 1960s. He studied for 50 years, 50 years, okay? Studied frogs. Frogs, you know, you cut the leg out, then can get another leg. Cut the tail out, then can get the, let the eventual tail disappear. But frog can regenerate. But then cannot, one human can cut the leg, cut the arm out, cannot regenerate the arm. So this man studied frog and uh, found to discover stem cells. This man used a very few molecules, <coughs> few molecules and uh, cocktails, genes, discover can differentiate stem cell controllably into different other different subspecies. So study frog, study human cell in tissue culture, discover stem cells, and win an overprice. <coughs> Here is graphene. And to gain and constantly Nobel Cell of what the Nobel Prize in Physics 2010 for groundbreaking experiment regarding two dimensional <coughs> material graphene. Here is graphene, it's carbon. It's carbon. The carbon here is exactly the same carbon as a diamond. Also as coal, you burn them. The coal in you burn them, or the diamond, and uh, the graphene are the exact same material. But diamond has different structure. So diamond is very hard. It's also conducting diamond. And this graphene is one of the best conducting material with very thin one layer so can allow the electron to flow. <coughs> Took them quite a few years to do the research. Graphene is right on your pencil. Nowadays, unfortunately, people don't use the pencil much anymore. Pencil is the graphite. A graphite from a single layer writing on paper, that is graphene. So then use pencil writing on piece of paper, use a piece of tape, use a scotch tape, and left up and on, look on the EM. That's how I discovered graphene. So graphene has a tremendous importance for shrinking down the computer further. Can be because it's so lightweight, can do the can implant into the body. People want to download the knowledge. It's more memory in your brain. So so far kind of interface because silicon is hard, it's hard material. Graphene is soft. So eventually you could interface with the, with the nervous system with graphene conducting material, so on. Here comes the MIT invention, Media Lab. How many have seen a Google Glass? Have seen Google Glass? Google Glass is now quite elegant, but then it's not elegant enough. But this is a precursor of Google Glass, 1993. Okay? This is Google Glass. This is a 2000 dollar glass, but with a big wire, big package with you, carry with you. Google Glass just like this kind of glass. So this is <coughs> the Apple Maker Glass, but not, not quite here. <coughs> so here is Google Glass, right here. Okay? So Google Glass essentially shorten you are, that you, instead you have to take your phone out from your pocket. You can just look at information right through your eyes. So there's all different wearable devices. MIT participate, you mentioned, in 19... 90s, okay? So now Apple Watch, this is a precursor of Apple Watch, not so elegant, but now it's getting much better. So now, once you have your curiosity, you still need other sense to do sense. One thing is do not afraid to make mistakes, but able to learn from mistakes and correct the mistakes, okay? If you don't, you're not, if you're afraid to make mistakes, you never do anything, you will not do experiment. In doing research, doing experiment, you make a lot of mistakes. But don't make a lot of mistakes when you treat a patient. It has a severe consequences, treating patients, making mistakes. 
So Albert Einstein said, a person who never made that mistake never tried anything new. Okay? Einstein also said, imagination is more important than knowledge. Same man. Francis Crick? By the way, in the real picture, I'm standing right here. <laughs> so he said, if you always want to be right, you would never say anything significant. Yeah? So doing research and or living as a fulfilled life, you also should have an open mind and a prepared mind to make discoveries. Here is Louis Pasteur. He said, in the field of observations, chances favor the prepared mind. <coughs> he discovered medicines. He also discovered priority of sugar molecules. Here is the mentor of Steve and myself. It's Alexander Rich. He said, why not? There's a two word here. It's actually very profound. So when people tell something, to you, and you either accept as it is, or you question it. You question, you have to question, you have to have a knowledge to question them. Okay? If you take from face value, people tell them, then I don't question, then you will never go very far. You need to question what people tell you. Be skeptical sometimes. Here is Carlton Geisherschick. He used to come to Indonesia quite a lot. He said it's important to explore, to do things others ignore. But that become important in 10 to 20 years. That will tell you 10 to 20 years is a very important benchmark. It took me 10 to 20 years to commercialize my discovery. So we need to focus, focus and focus once you made a discovery you attempt to understand the natural phenomenon. So Alex Switch again said, it's important to know what to do. He said, it's, it is equally important to know what not to do. Okay, very important. You need to focus to do your sense. You cannot do 500 cents or five cents at the same time. You need to follow your own intuition and intuitive feelings for what is most important and pursue it persistently and relentlessly. Never give up. Okay, very important, never give up. Mozart, musician, composer, he said, I pay no attention to whatever to anybody else's praise or blame. I simply follow my own feelings. He is one of the best composers in, in, in human history. Einstein had a definition. Somebody interviewed Einstein, asked Einstein, and uh, what's the definition of death? Einstein answered, if I die, I can no longer hear Mozart. So Einstein is a big fan of Mozart. Yeah. So this is Richard Feynman, American physicist, Nobel laureate in physics. He said, what do, do you care other people think? So essentially, follow your own intuitions. Trust yourself. Be self-confident. The Chinese man, Lu Xun, he said, follow your own passion. Let other people gossip. Yeah? It's true. Yeah? My own personal experience shows this and other things. Many people said, said, this will not go, no go nowhere. I should stop. No, I did not stop. This is Professor Robert Nanger, MIT, and uh, MIT Institute professor. He said, a lot of times, people will tell you that your idea or your invention cannot be done. Okay, be done, should be D here. It is impossible, but I think that is really true. If you really believe yourself, and if you really work hard and keep persevering, there's very little that is truly impossible. Nanger 
founded 30 biotech companies and uh, consulting for 50 entities created the wealth of 100 billion dollars annually. He created several industries, including drug deliveries, tissue engineering, medical devices, and uh, discovered uh, several angiogenesis and inhibitors, and so on. Single person has created trillions of dollars, one person. Yeah? But when he was young, he was ridiculed, he was uh, almost lost his job, almost lost his job. His grant was turned down nine times. Nine times his grant was turned down. And uh, he, people in his department, older senior people, smoke and blow the smoke into his face and told him you should look for another job. But now he becomes so well known, people have forgotten what was before. Like. So he won numerous prize and the Millennium Technology Prize and also won the Queen Elizabeth Prize last November, just a few months ago. He also won a prize from Iran, Katsumi Prize win a prize from Israel, the Wolf Prize. Imagine, so both Israel and Iran gave them medical prizes. Yeah? So, so he's a truly wonderful person. So also be key, keenly aware of latest technologies, research methods and protocols. Car branding and his new technologies are very important for accelerating scientific discoveries. He's won almost 100 set of synchrotron in Grenoble, ESRF. And before there <coughs> was no beamline for protein crystallography, he did. Now it's pointing that if we want to understand the fixed function, you need to study the structure. So now it's pointing when the two unshared Nobel Prizes, two, one for chemistry, one for peace. Max Plut, he said in <coughs> science, truth always wins. All his heroes follow his son on here. Now, I'll tell you a bit about my research. I was curious in 1992, at, at the Golden Conference, I asked a very simple question. <coughs> what are the simplest molecules that could uh, enclose to encapsulate some simple biomolecules that start the origin of life. I have to confess, not confess, I should tell you directly, I do not believe God, nor Allah. I believe the origin of life comes from, from single molecules to something more complex. Okay. Because I believe something from simple can emerge to something complex, <coughs> we can study them. If you believe that God created life, then you will not study them because already is somebody created already. You don't have you will not question. To ask question is the key doing research. <coughs> then Steve Young arrived. <laughs> Young Steve Young, two thousand one, <laughs> and uh, working on the system to work on some very short peptides. Those peptides Steve worked on. Very simple, very simple peptides. Seven amino acids long, <coughs> and as he systematically did a lot of research. <coughs> one thing I want to point out right here, this one. Six alanines, one lysine. Simple stuff. And also form a very nice nanotube, nanovesicles. <coughs> so Steve showed those peptides indeed from a very nice nanotubes. Okay, and the nano and the vesicles, my cells, and so on. So that's where our model to show that. You can see the tubes and vesicles. This is like a cell type. So we publish many papers, uh, Steve's papers, and so on, and many more. So this simple system, simple peptides, can generate something so complex. Yeah? You say, what's the big deal about this? Select peptide. Well, now it's a very big deal. 
2015, July 7th, Japanese National Cancer Institute at a press release. It's an A6K is now used to deliver SRNA to treat human cancers. Development of novel nuclear acid drug discovered by National Cancer Center is all this discovered by the Steve study the peptide. Without the peptide Steve studied A6K, the phenomena would not be possible. Okay? To treat the cancer is very difficult. And with the new technology, SIRNA, now you can treat a target to treat this particular cancer. And but it must use one of the peptides Steve worked on, A6K. Ten years ago, fifteen years ago, when he worked on 2000, 2001, when he worked on that particular peptide, there's absolutely no applications. Zero. Totally pure, pure imaginative and then the creative research, curiosity driven research, now become very important here. But take 15 years. <laughs> yeah, be patient. I also discovered, reported that discovery in 1993, a discovery of protein, a peptide found in yeast, the yeast making bread, making beer. In yeast has a protein, one of them is right here, and that one turned out to be very useful, turned out to have to do with wound healing, and for drug release. So this molecule was eventually re-emerged in this molecule, now become a clinical product, clinical product for wound healing, directly useful for medicine, and soon will be used for drug, drug release, and can also again used for medicine as well. It's a discovery something in yeast led to a billion dollar company a few couple of years ago. So because this peptide molecule can undergo self-assembly to form the nanofiber structure. The nanofiber is a hydrogel, by the way, people even consider could also be useful for cosmetics. So this comes the peptide <coughs> from nanofiber the nanofiber from a hydrogel, okay? The hydrogel is 1%. 99% is water, 1% is peptide. So the hydrogel can be uh, mechanically disrupted. And then, but after two hours, the fiber come back, okay? And it can repeatedly do this, repeating, disrupt and come back, disrupt and come back, no problem. Okay, that become very useful technology for drug release. Furthermore, we found this material very useful for generating neurons, nerve cell cells. So you have a cut in the brain, optic nerve in the between the eyes and the optic nerve behind your visual cortex. So you implant this this uh, gel. And then the nerve system, nerve can regenerate because the nerve cells can migrate into the gel and make reconnections. So the title of the paper here is Nano Neuron Leading Peptide Nanofiber Scaffold for Brain Repair and Axon Regeneration with Functional Return of Vision. And uh, during that experiment, the Todd Holmes, not Todd Holmes, Alice, Rutley, Alice Banky, he discovered that this material can not only fix, repair the brain of the leaching, but it can also stop bleeding. He called the nano hemostasis, nano hemostasis solution, immediate hemostasis at a nanoscale. So he can show you can puncture the brain, the, the, the blood, um, vein, or artery, and you can uh, use this gel to immediately seal this, this uh, wound. And the people now even consider could it be useful for treating other wounds of the, and the surgery and so on. So now it's very useful for medicine. Another experiment we have done, done by, by uh, postdocs and uh, visiting scientists, and shows controlled release 
a functional protein through designed self assembly peptide nano fiber isogel scaffold. And here, lysozyme trypsin inhibitor and DSA and the monoclonal antibody human IgG can be encapsulated in, the, in this scaffold and come out very slowly. So become very useful and a medical device for slow and sustained drug release. How long you can keep this going? It can start going on for three months, 100 days. Three months, the drug was not a complete released. It's still in it. Still in it, we presume can go for another three months if I have high loading. So this paper was published in a journal for control release. Okay, so very useful. Imagine come from yeast, the peptide become useful drug release substance. But it's very difficult to take 20 years, 1990, 1990 to 2011. Yeah? So, but it was a tremendous success. There's all the basic research, there's a business development. By the time you come here, I said two years ago, 2014, and uh, the company a stock worth one billion dollars. Okay, so that's a new generation, a new medical medical uh, uh, useful material. So my new research is to form a new code, and in the human society, in the human history. The several codes are very important. One is Morse code, generate trillions of dollars, right? And the computer code generates millions, billions, of trillions of dollars, right? Computer code. The genetic code generated trillions of dollars because old biotechnology depends on genetic code. So recently, I also invented a code called QTY code for protein engineering will have a big impact. So Steve and I, we are in, in the same, uh, working on this problem. Here is the example, MIT. First, it generated knowledge. So generated knowledge, then now produce companies, funding companies. Look at the companies MIT founded. HP, Cisco, that's pretty good, right? The drug release company, Alchemist, Surface Logic, and all the Alchemist for the computer, computer fast, high speed uh, search for the Google. Why Google search so fast? It's not only Google's algorithm, but also because Alchemist. Yeah. So here is the 3D matrix. I found it. My colleague found the e-ink for the producer Kindle. Kindle book sold on Amazon is founded by my colleague Joe Jacobson. He also founded a company called Covio. Covio is printed electronics. Most of the electronics in your mobile phone these days are not through chip making, come from the printing. Because printing is so much cheaper, and that's kind of getting much quicker too. And MIT founded so many companies, the both also founded by MIT. Yeah? Dropbox, it many other things, and you may not have zip cards, so something you have never heard, but doesn't matter. It's very funny, as I told you, 26,800 company founded by MIT alumni. What is W3 Where? Oh, here, W3 Health. It's uh, you know, internet uh, founder, and Tim Berners-Lee. Tim Berners-Lee, he formed a consortium of the W3Con. And then the, that's probably one with a sub, subsidiary part of two. Yeah. It's a worldwide web health, probably. Yeah. Here, I also want to inspire people. And then uh, to, we found the Molecular Frontier Inquiry Prize to give Molecular Frontiers Inquiry Prize award to boys and girls, you are, you are probably a little older, and under 18 for Best Molecular Frontier Inquiry Prize. 
for scientific break, breakthroughs, not, not mainly to scientific breakthroughs. So it's in this website called uh, More Clues, not the molecules. More Clues, okay? Go to the website. More Clues for the children. You have children under 18. The youngest one who won the prize was eight years old. Eight, yeah? And uh, so the other eight who have 11 years old, have 13 years old, but the youngest one is eight. Here, I made this medal. I designed this medal. On this side, on one side, molecular inquiry prize, molecular frontier inquiry prize. In center axis, here, is DNA double helix, looking from the center axis. Actually, if I ask a question to you, probably most of you will not understand what it is. So this is DNA looking from the center axis. On the other side, I have four, four words, four words. Curiosity, creativity, honesty, and knowledge. Okay, that's very important. It is, must be in this, in this order. Curiosity, creativity, honesty, knowledge. So this is a carbon nanotube, and this is a carbon fluorine soccer ball. So whoever wins the prize has a name, and greed, and then, then uh, that's uh, the Molecular Frontier Inquiry Prize. Who founded this prize? It's all the red ones are the Nobel Prize winners. The blue ones, many of them, are potential Nobel candidates. Okay? So it's a very important uh, um, organization and uh, with many important people uh, on it. And uh, the questions submitted by the children often are read by those people. Now, though I wrote this, to pursue knowledge, you need to be curious about the natural phenomena and to make careful observations, to think freely, broadly, and deeply, and ask inquisitive and big questions and try to answer them on your own, okay? And seek out for answers widely and carry out experiment and, and repeat it. So I think I should stop here and the rest of them and uh, it's uh, just eye devices and uh, different things. Ask questions and so on and so forth. Okay? Um, have a vision, be persistent, Pursue, regardless of how long it takes, and encounter countless, countless difficulties, and have access to a wide range of online literatures, have access to instruments, some simple, inexpensive ones, and others, and analytic experiment. Have access quickly to research reagent. All right, and uh, you know, this one I want to tell you how important this is. I was in China last week, could not get on Google, and could not get on Wikipedia, could not get on YouTube, could not get on Facebook, could not get on, on Twitter, and so on. But it was a Google, Wikipedia, that's so important for, for knowledge, okay? I tell Chinese people each year, China lose or waste at least uh, one b one hundred billion dollars because they could not access the latest information. Then waste a lot of resources because they don't know what's the frontiers. Yeah. Then could not search the literature. It's a nonsense. I hope Indonesia is have access to the Google and the Wikipedia freely. Thank you very much for uh, coming. Yep.